So this is going to be the last video of me in this place and this is the last painting I did in this studio. Today I will be sharing with you some updates and a new painting video. Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. It's been quite a while and I hope you are doing well and had a wonderful summer. As you probably know, I took a pause on YouTube, mainly because I want to focus on updating my course. My current online course is under a major overhaul. I have recorded a lot of videos for the new lessons, but what needs to take a lot of time is editing. I was planning to relaunch my course at the end of August, which is now, but I realized that it is an unrealistic goal. I still have a day job that takes the majority of my day. My kids are also out of school during summer, so there's quite a bit of more family time than usual. The past two years during the summer, my wife would take all three kids back to Taiwan. Since I was alone here, I was able to produce things a lot more efficiently. But this year, I don't want to miss out any more family time with them, so I asked my wife to stay. I have very limited time to work on my course, that's why I am not able to finish it right now. I am thinking about doing a pre-release though, so if you haven't purchased my course and want end now, you can do so a lot sooner. But I am planning to do pre-release after I do some essential updates, like update some lessons and additional exercise and stuff, then start rolling out more updates as soon as it's ready. Of course, all of the updates will be free for students. So if you want to enroll early, definitely sign up to my mailing list and you will get a notification as soon as the pre-release starts. I will share more detail after I move and settle down in my new studio, so stay tuned on that. The past Saturday, I did a live stream painting based on a screenshot I took when I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I love that game, the graphic is amazing, and the world they created is so believable. I took quite a few screenshots hoping to do a painting of them, so I did one here. Even though the live stream was recorded on YouTube, there were some audio issues I didn't know, so I took it down. I re-edited it with my own voiceover, so I am going to share that with you. After that, I would like to take you on a very brief tour of my current studio before I tear everything down and move, so be sure you watch till the end. Okay, so this painting is painted off from a screenshot I took from a game called Red Dead Redemption 2. I really enjoy this game. I play a little bit more than I wanted to, but it's a beautiful game and the world that this game has presented is very immersive and very beautiful as you can see in this screenshot that I took. So I decided to take several screenshots and to paint them into watercolor paintings because some of the sceneries are very suitable for it. And I think it's a very interesting experience when you're playing a video game like this. To me, it become like an experience. It's just not just for fun. It's really an experience. Video game has become so graphically advanced that everything can look very very realistic now while not every single game are looking are going for this realism look some of the game are looking like this is very very realistic so it really helps the immersion of the experience so when i'm playing the game i actually feel like i am in the environment i get to visit the places that i never been to visit the time the era that i've never been to so anyways very wonderful experience i very enjoy this game so i finished the drawing as you can see so i definitely the focus is the main character here the character on the horse his arthur morgan so after i did the drawing I start my first wash. So this is almost like a sunset time in the game. So I will treat it as a sunset. And there's some clouds in the sky. So I leave some highlight out. I leave some space on paint. So that they can become clouds. 
So I did some cool colors, blue on the top, and as the wash comes down, I start to paint and add more warm colors. Don't be afraid to go a little bit more overboard with warm color because they fade off tremendously. And as you can see, I left a spot of highlight there and the left, that is actually the sun. So sun is emitting this very warm glow. And I continue to wash down and you can paint over the character safely because it is all in the dark, it's all in the shadow. It is backlighting, so you pretty much just see the silhouette of the figure. And I do leave the horse and the roof of the house white because they are basically very, very light, especially the horse. The horse is a white horse. So even though it is in the shadow, it is still going to be brighter than the surrounding, as you can see. And as I come down, I start to just darken things a little bit more and start to paint in some warm green color. As I said, I never really own a tube of green. I usually use copper turquoise as a green, and I'll either mix it with warm color or cool color for different tones of green. And now before the first wash is dry, I start to manipulate the wash a little bit, splatting some waters, adding some water with my brush, scratch a little bit, just to get some texture of the grass while I still can. And now the first wash is dry. I can go back to the top and start to render some cloud. What I do here is I use a sponge and re-wet some of the areas, especially the areas that I want to paint cloud. And I will start to paint some shape wet onto wet. So now I paint a cloud there. So give it some warm color first, and then I go back into it with some darker, cooler color as the dark of the cloud, the shadow. Now I think most people will agree that cloud is very, very beautiful, but I think it's very, very important that you don't spend too much time on painting cloud and paint too much detail, especially if the cloud is still just part of the background. Keep it light and transparent is always important, especially for background like this. So just paint and leave it as transparent as possible. Give it a little bit of definition and volume and your job is done. And I re-wet some of the surface and I'll just do some soft cloud and distance. Again, I refrain myself from painting too much. This is just the background and I really need to remind myself I'm just painting the background. Don't get caught up into it. And now I re-wet the area in the horizon on the right and I do a kind of a damp mixture and paint a distant mountain into it. And now I have a drier mixture and use the tip of my brush to get a little bit of mixture and pigment into the wet area and they will act like distant trees because when you have a drier mixture and you use the tip of your brush to drop in the paint wet onto wet you will get some some sort of a soft shape but is somewhat controlled and that is perfect for distant trees and elements painting some mid-ground trees. So because I'm painting into some wet area, so we got some interesting lost and found shape. And I try to connect them as much as possible while breaking them up a little bit. But mostly you want them to feel connected and flow together. Now I start to work on the mountains on the left. Again, you can paint over our main character here. Just be mindful of the horse. You don't want to paint into the face of the horse and the roof of the house. So other than that, it will be fine. 
So I try to create a little bit of those bloom effect from the sun, but it's not doing what I wanted to do. So I decided to just paint over it again. Whenever you have a wash that is almost dry, but it's not completely dry yet, and you paint into it with a little bit too much water, you will start to see cauliflower edges. And when that happens, one of the way you can kind of fix it is to just paint over the area all over it again, add more water, so it will just wash off everything and you can kind of start fresh. Now it's still better to do it right once, but if that is the situation you're dealing with, there's usually a way to kind of compensate that, improvise it. Continue the wash down and I deepen the color of the grass. Again, keep the grass more to the warm side of things because again, it is sunset. All the grass has this yellow golden glow to it. So that is why I like to use cobalt turquoise to mix my green because adding some warm color like hands on yellow here and some yellow ochre and things like that, you can make some very nice warm green instead of just use like a sap green or something straight out of a tube. Mixing your own green usually make the green a little bit more interesting to look at. Okay, now I'm painting this big trees in the middle. Try to get some interesting shape there, but keep in mind you want to keep it as one shape. You don't want to dab too much into it. And I paint the wall of the house, the distant barn. So I try to keep my brush stroke to the minimum and as simple as possible. For me, it's very important to keep the painting clean and simple looking. A nice loose painting is not to cut up with details, and better yet, you are able to suggest detail with minimum amount of brush stroke. So you don't paint a lot of details, but the way you paint the shape suggests a lot of detail and complexity. So you painting minimum amount of details, but the viewer see it, they can connect the dot and imagine the details within the shape that you paint. I think that's what makes a good loose painting. So that takes a lot of practice and observation and learning proper visual language. Now I'm painting author here. So again, it is just a silhouette. So I try to mix a dark mixture to paint him. And again, be mindful of the shape. You want the shape to be nice and clean and interesting. And you might notice that I don't fill in everything. I'm not trying to paint a shape, draw a shape and start to fill everything in. I want things to look a little bit more interesting. So I left a few spots on paint here and there. I mean, don't be too intentional about it, but definitely don't fill everything in. That's not the purpose of painting. You want to paint with brushstroke, not filling everything in and dab your way through. Now I'm painting the horse. I'm paying quite a bit of attention to the horse butt because it needs to feel round and solid. So I definitely re-wet the surface and try to give it a nice form shadow of his butt. And I also want to paint some cat shadow from his tail and also the contact shadow where he sits on the horse. When two surfaces touching each other, there should be a little bit of contact shadow that will make things feel grounded and things are in contact. At this stage, you should already start to see quite a bit of the depths already. So from the background, the lightness of the background and the softness of the background to things that are more defined like the figure, more defined and also much darker. 
So play with the value and the softness of the shape will really help you to push the depths. Now I'm painting the cast shadow casting from the character and the horse and start to give it some more details in the back. So there's like a windmills and a couple poles. Those can really help to give more sense of verticalities because everything is pretty flat. So something poke out of the horizon that will make things look a little bit more interesting. Adding some more suggestions of tree and bushes in the distance. Again, try to keep him as simple as possible. Okay, so now I am darken the horse a little bit more. So I paint it dark and I use a dry, sort of a damp, clean brush and go over it to lift some paint. So the result will be a nice round horse butt. So this is almost finished. I just need to push the depths a little bit more. So I do a glazing in the foreground, make things a little bit darker. And I add just a little bit more texture on the overall grass. Try to keep those shadows and the texture horizontal and flat as possible because you want to have the sense of vast flatness. So try to paint some horizontal shape in a situation like this will always help. So at this point, I feel like the character has like a halo effect around it. So I paint some dark shape, try to paint it around him and try to make it feel like it is in front of him. So it does no longer feel like the character around the character, there's this soft light halo around him because you don't paint through anything. We're almost finished here, just adding a little bit more detail, some more bushes and trees in the distance. And again, all these are just visual language. You don't want to paint too complicated and you definitely don't want to dab your way through. Here is the finished painting. I quite enjoy this painting and I hope you do too. Okay, so this is my studio. So this is where I paint my easel, my paintbrush, and my palette. This sticker reminds me to hustle. It's from my friend Sean McCabe. Wonderful, wonderful friend and a great entrepreneur. And here's some of my buddies that paint with me. And it's a mess right now, okay? It is absolutely a mess right now because I am packing to move, so everything is just super chaotic. It's not usually like this. And this is where I film my coffee talk and all the lessons when I need to speak to the camera. This is where I record it. So the background, as you can see, is actually just a piece of cloth and I just put it on the wall. In my new place, I actually thinking to actually do wood panels so it looks a little bit more authentic. I got a bunch of paintings here. So that's pretty much it. I paint here, here's my live stream. I got two cameras set up. My GoPro shows the overall view of the painting and this is a zoom in camera. So I, it is off right now, but if I turn it on, I have a motorized tripod head. So what happened is if I turn it on and use this remote, I will be able to manipulate the camera where it's focusing on. So this is a zoom in camera. So if I, let's say I zoom in to the house, I will just need to move the camera like this and if I want to move the camera from the house to the figure I will just use the remote here so I don't need to go back to change my tripod and anything I can just paint 
and with my left hand I can do that real quick and this is a small monitor that I can see what you see during the live stream and this camera is taking a image from my palette so usually you see an image of my palette on the right that's because there's a, one dedicated camera on the palette is pretty important that I show you guys what I use to mix colors and this is a webcam so whenever you need to see my stupid face you can use I will turn this on so that you can see my face when I'm speaking to the camera while I'm standing here. So yeah, it's not a pretty setup, a lot of cables and things like that. Hopefully I will try to get my studio look a little bit more organized, a little bit better in my new house. There's where I hold my phone, which I'm recording with my phone right now, but usually I'll put my phone here so whenever you guys have message, I am, will be able to look at the message here while I paint. So the key is not to leave my painting station. I got my iPad here for the reference photo that I'm looking at. So anyways, that's my studio. Hopefully you enjoy this tour of my very messy studio. I'm not going to go over my material right now because I have another video of that. I'll link the video down below. So that's it, my current studio. After I record this video, I'm going to pack up everything for move. Thank you so much for watching this one. Hopefully after I move, I will get things to settle and start making video again very soon. Until then, I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor and I will see you again very soon.